This segment is sponsored by Center for Family Safety and Healing. For those impacted by family violence, the path to healing can be a difficult one. But there is help out there and here to tell us more specifically about domestic violence and its impact on children is Dr. Kristen Crichton. She represents the Center for Family Safety and Healing. It's so good to have you with us on this important topic, Dr. Crichton. Hi, thank you so much for having me. I'm happy to be here. Of course. Well, we first should start with what are some of the ways that exposure to domestic violence can affect child development and ultimately the long-term health outcomes of that? Yeah, so I think it's important to recognize that um, there's more victims to domestic violence than, than the victim of violence themselves. Um, if children are exposed to uh, DV, domestic violence, either because they hear it or because they see it, it can really lead to lifelong impacts on their healthy, normal development. Um, and that can show up in lots of different ways. It can affect their attachment um, to their caregivers. It can affect their school performance and, and academic success. And later in life, it can reflect their relationships with, with peers um, and, and other partners later in life, as well as their own parenting when they get older. The other thing that's important to note is that domestic violence and, and child maltreatment coexist 30 to 60% of the time um, in some studies. So it's important to recognize for anyone who's working with victims of domestic violence that children who are in an environment of violence may be the victims of abuse or neglect themselves. I know there's been great concern within the mental health community that because school had been disrupted as long as it had and now kids are truly in school full time, that maybe some of these these things that might have been noticed otherwise by a teacher or a caregiver, um, they're kind of being glossed over to some degree. Yeah, absolutely. We know that, that teachers, um, school counselors, daycare providers are the source of many, many of the referrals to Child Protective Services. And during COVID and with quarantining and children being um, in remote learning situations, we became very concerned um, that that um, that abuse was going to go unrecognized. And, and sure enough, we saw reports to Child Protective mm -hmm. Services go down um, in that time that the children were away. Hopefully, as kids are kind of coming um, back more into school physically or at least online more with their, their teachers and, um, and other um, uh, counselors and care providers, mm -hmm. it'll be more recognized again. Well, for those who maybe might want to be made aware of the symptoms or behaviors that could be a red flag, what would you say to that? So it's going to vary a lot by, by the age of the child, by the child's own personality and the nature of the child. And um, it, it's important to recognize that they may have symptoms right away after the exposure to, to domestic violence, or it could happen much later. Um, so symptoms that we see by age in young children, um, they're really going to be strongly influenced by their caregiver's response. So they may seem more irritable or fussy. They may seem more clingy. Um, they may kind of regress in their behavior, kind of have more wedding accidents um, in, in older children that have already been potty trained. Um, moving up to school age kids, kind of elementary school kids, they may have difficulty paying attention in school, which can lead to um, school failure or struggles. Um, and then they may become quiet or withdrawn and just not really want to engage mm -hmm. um, with other people. Or alternatively, they may start really acting out and start fighting with peers, with siblings, um, and kind of having those acting out behaviors. So like I said, it can be kind of a spectrum and wide range of response. Um, and then in our oldest children, the, the teenagers, um, once they're over 13, they really have the most behavioral changes as a result of their exposure to violence. Um, they may sleep more or less. They may really start talking back and kind of refusing to follow rules. Um, they may want to talk about the event or they alternatively may not, to, may not want to talk about the event. So it can kind of go either way. Um, what's important for them is making sure if they do want to talk about it, they have a safe and trusted mm. adult to talk to. Absolutely. Um, and, and these kids may also experience frequent nightmares. Wow. So are there resources out there maybe a parent or a caregiver can find so that they can support that child? Absolutely. I, working with a pediatrician is, is very helpful and uh, important for local resources, um, for referral, for counseling, because the most important thing is that we get these kids services that they need to really heal and cope with the trauma they've experienced. So pediatricians can be a good referral source for counseling. The Center for Family Safety and Healing here at Nationwide Children's um, can always help any family. Our number is 614-722-8200. And then the most important thing is that if any 
If anyone suspects that a child is um, the victim of abuse um, or is in a situation that is unsafe, we can all report to Children's Services using 1-855-OH-CHILD, and that will connect anyone in Ohio to the, the local county where the child lives, and, and a report can be made to help kids stay safe. Well, I'm so sorry there's even a need for any of this, but thank you so much for this important information. Of course. Thank you for having me. So as Dr. Crichton said, to get more information, go to familysafetyandhealing.org, and you can call them as well, 614-722-8200.